Mississippi's Republican Speaker of the House has made clear that girls as young as 12 who get pregnant as a result of incest, meaning a family member molesting and raping them, should be forced through that pregnancy and to carry that pregnancy to term, a 12 year old. Now let's talk about how this all went down. It all started when an Associated Press reporter by the name of Emily Pettis had asked him, hey, what about this situation? You guys are super restrictive in regard to abortion in the state of Mississippi, but what about a case involving incest? Well, Mississippi's ban on abortion does not include an exception for incest, Gunn said. Um, and Philip Gunn is the name of the Mississippi Speaker of the House. Uh, as the Free Press, uh, at, you know, Ashton Pittman reports, I don't know that that will be changed. Asked if he believes the legislature should revisit that part of the law, the Speaker responded, personally, no, I do not. He says, I believe life begins at conception. Every life is valuable, and those are my personal beliefs. Now, he was pressed on this issue further by another reporter. Let's hear how that went down. So then, quote, your child was by a father on the ship. So she carried that child on her. That is, that is my personal belief. I believe life begins at conception. He believes life begins at conception. So even before a fertilized egg implants on the uterine wall. Okay, so if that is a life, a human life that apparently deserves more rights than viable, living, breathing human beings outside the womb have, um, what happens if that egg fails to attach itself to the uterine wall? I know that I'm using words about human anatomy that he might not understand, so I apologize. Maybe I should speak a little more slowly so he could look these things up. But should that woman be charged for murder if her body rejects that fertilized egg? So, I mean, it's life at the moment of conception, right? And why do we start there? Why don't we start with uh, your ball sack, okay? Uh, what happens with all that sperm that you be spilling on the ground? Uh, in your bed sheets when you have a wet dream? I think you're a giant murderer. We need to investigate. Yep. There needs to be surveillance cameras in his bedroom. What's going on with that? What's happening to all those human lives? I mean, these people are a joke. And look, that might sound like a ridiculous extreme argument, right? But let's take a, let's take a little trip to Mississippi. Uh, and really examine whether this uh, Republican leader in that state cares about human lives. Um, turns out that infant mortality is highest in the great state of Mississippi. They care about babies so much that they allow so many of them to die in Mississippi. So you're looking at a chart that was put together by the CDC. This is based on data from 2020. And the darker blue the state's coloring is, the more infant deaths they have. And as you can notice, Mississippi is dark blue. Okay. All of the worst in the land are Republican states. Yeah. This is an infant mortality. The thing, the issue that they claim is their number one issue, saving the lives of children. Yeah. They are the absolute worst in because they don't actually care about that. Let's take a look at this list. As you can see, Mississippi comes in at number one when it comes to infant mortality. So the death rate, 8.27, is out of a thousand live births. So out of a thousand live births, 8.27 infants die. Coming in at second, unsurprisingly, Louisiana, third, West Virginia, fourth, Arkansas, fifth, Alabama, and then look, oh well, South Dakota also makes it on that list. All of deep red states mm -hmm. don't care about children's lives one bit. All they care about is controlling women's bodies. And by the way, the senator, one of the senators from Louisiana, who came in number two worst, said, "Yeah, but that's only if you factor in black people. I mean, if you just look at white folks, we we do relatively okay." No, you don't actually. But by the way, I mean, look at how callous that is. No. Oh, black babies dying, I don't care at all. Well, the only relevant people are white people and we right. do mediocre in that. No, these people are disgusting and sick. Are they providing health care for people who can't afford it in the state of Mississippi? No. Uh, in fact, we talked about South Dakota briefly. I wanna go to South Dakota because Gunn is not the only Republican to support no exceptions to legal abortions. Nome, meaning Christy Nome, the governor of South Dakota, echoed the sentiment, telling CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday that she did not support legal abortion in cases of rape. The governor considered a potential GOP presidential contender in 2024. Get this, 
cited the importance of building stronger families. Hold on, what? So are you suggesting that women should be forced to carry their rapist baby and give birth to their rapist baby to build a strong family with the rapist and the rapist baby? Is that what you're saying? That's your idea of a strong family? That's your idea of a strong family. These people are creeps. Be clear about that. They're perverts and they're creeps, okay? Taking the side of the person who got a family member impregnated through incest, being more supportive of what the rapist has done in impregnating a woman. Even in the case of Mississippi, a girl as young as 12. Who cares? I mean, these are the kind of states that were in favor of child marriage as well, by the way. Yeah, uh, to perverts, all of them. Uh, if you're a Republican, I now, if I meet you, I think pervert. Uh, so, but but listen to the tw that that analogy there. So, she says no exception for incest; it'll make the family stronger. So, in the question they ask Gunn, so if a 12 year old is raped by her uncle, and you want her to carry it to term? And he's like, yes. So she would be pregnant while she's 12. She would deliver presumably around the age of 13. And the baby would be both her child and her cousin. Maybe that's what Noam means by a stronger family. Because boy, she would have many ties to that child. This is the sick way that Republicans think. They think that's no big deal at all. Forcing a 12 year old girl to carry a rapist child is no big deal. But you want me to give $2 extra for infant mortality to save babies lives? Nah, I wanna give it to the rich instead. And what happens after the babies are born? If they're lucky enough to survive in a state like Mississippi, what happens? Like, what does their life look like if they were born into a situation where the mother has no means, doesn't have the resources necessary to support that child? Well, in the annual Annie E. Casey Foundation Kids Count Report, Mississippi maintains its 48th ranking for overall child well being, with 27% of its children living in poverty in 2017. And let's pause for a second because I bring up these kinds of statistics often and sometimes the voters in Mississippi get offended because they think that we're making fun of them. No, I'm not making fun of you. The point I'm trying to make is the politicians that you are electing into office do not care about you. They don't care about your family, they don't care about little children. They don't care about anything other than their position of power, other than campaigning on whatever manufactured culture war narrative they wanna lean on to gain their positions of power or keep their positions of power. And they leave you in the dark, they leave you in the dust. You're suffering, you can't feed yourself, you can't feed your family, you can't provide a roof over your head. And they distract you with all sorts of culture war fear mongering. So you don't pay attention to the fact that they're robbing you blind. Your representatives aren't representing you. I want you to fight for yourself and actually find lawmakers or support lawmakers who care about getting you out of a bad situation, including the extreme poverty you're facing in this state. Let's give you more statistics because that was from 2017. You you deserve, you know, more recent statistics. So let's look at what's going on now. Mississippi, Louisiana are among these states with most children living in poverty. So uh situation hasn't gotten much better. So this is data from 2020. And Mississippi, when it comes to child poverty, it says 22nd most because that's just looking at the raw number of people living in poverty in the state. But if you look at the rate per capita, meaning the number of you know people living in poverty, children living in poverty in this case, 28.1% of children in Mississippi are living in poverty, the highest. So the situation has actually devolved. They went from 48, the 48th state with child poverty to now the highest state with child poverty. Overall poverty rate in the state is nearly 20%. Families with annual incomes below $10,000, 5.7%. Second highest in the country. Okay, so two last two things for me. Child poverty rate number one in Mississippi. That's a, and they, they actively choose every single year not to give money to that category. They say, no, we would rather have it for, save it for tax cuts for the rich. And then they say, we care about children. <laughs> I care about children, we're not gonna fund it at all. Give the money to the rich, give the money to the rich. Care about kids, get the women, control their bodies. Make sure they don't do anything. 
the government now owns their body in Mississippi. Now guys, let me ask you the last question. If you're in Mississippi or any of these red states, now where abortion is illegal. They say, well, we gotta control a woman's body for nine months for the to protect the life. Okay, but there's people who need transplants, like kidney transplants, right? What if we take guys' bodies for just nine hours, not even nine months? No, we should. I mean, right to life, right to life. Right to life. So many people need kidney transplants. I mean, there's, there's tens of thousands of people on that list, and every one of them will have life or death, depending on what the government does. Government should force so why, kidney and donations. Since we already take women's bodies for other issues regarding life, in your opinion, why can't we just only take men's bodies just for nine hours? It's so much more fair. Take their kidneys and give it to someone, and it'll say they're, they, they're still alive. They only only take one kidney, so both of you are alive. We got two lives for the price of one. And that's much less intrusive. Why don't we do that for guys? Oh no, freedom! Well, what about women's freedom? I don't care. That's what I thought. They couldn't even be bothered to temporarily wear a mask over their faces to prevent the spread of a contagious and lethal virus. They are not pro-life. They love to exploit these issues for political power. They love to control women. They love to, more importantly, punish women. Punish women, that is what this is about. And I think everything else that they get involved in that leads to death in their states makes it abundantly clear that they never cared about human lives to begin with. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.